So this is the fourth video sort of interaction with fans, whatever you want to call it, video I've done on this channel. And I mean the first three have gone pretty well so far it's safe to say. Uh, but in this video this is where things could go really downhill. Like yeah, very downhill. Because I am going to be giving my thoughts on your unpopular theme park opinions and when people give unpopular theme park opinions in this community it's quite common for people including myself to get quite triggered by those opinions so yeah I'm likely going to be getting quite triggered in this video if you're new here welcome to Thrillnet make sure you subscribe and click the bell to enable the notifications so you don't miss any future videos well any future videos if I don't end up storming out of the room during this video because I'm not triggered and basically cancel Thrillnet altogether because I'm that fed up. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to be uh, basically giving my opinions on your unpopular opinions, maybe dropping a couple of unpopular opinions of my own in there, you know, if that sort of you know fits uh, what I'm talking about because uh, why not uh, but yeah without further ado let's get into it so the first unpopular opinion then comes from someone I've been getting to know recently and that is Emily Graham and she says infusion isn't that bad I mean that ride is called infusion and we're talking about infusion at Blackpool Pleasure Beach for those of you who don't know um, yeah, that ride is called Infusion for one reason, because it's designed to infuse pain. It's very painful, hence why everyone says it is quote unquote bad, um, but yeah, according to her, it's not that bad and clearly therefore not that painful, because if she found finds it painful then she wouldn't enjoy it, because I mean, who enjoys pain? And I mean. Well, based off the one ride I've had on Infusion, it was very, very painful. It is, uh, as you will know if you've watched my uh, video where I basically ranked every coaster that I've ridden uh, for Coaster Box Vote Coasters poll. Uh, click the card in the top right if you've not seen that. Uh, but yeah, those of you who watched that will know that it is the worst roller coaster I've ever ridden in my opinion. It was damn awful, like most of the Comer SLCs. I mean, when it was at Southport Pleasureland before it was relocated for the 2007 season, it was called Traumatizer. And I wonder why, because the amount of pain it inflicts on you is going to traumatize you, so yeah, hence why it was called Traumatizer. And it's strange how like, every SLC in the world nearly seems to have like names that associate with pain, like even in Planet Coaster, the SLC in that game's called mind melt. Oh I wonder why because SLCs typically inflict so much pain to your head so they're probably going to melt your mind but I mean yeah Blackpool even need to get vest restraints on infusion, the coma vest restraints uh, so that when your head's being jolted from side to side it's not in against something or they need to destroy the whole thing or they need to get sued for being responsible for having caused brain damage to millions of people including myself. People have reported that you can get smooth rides in, on Infusion if you ride it on the right day and if you sat uh, towards the front of the train. don't believe I was sat towards the front when I rode it, I believe it was towards the back uh, but yeah still generally the thing's incredibly painful and it is bad so I completely disagree with that opinion. Our next opinion then on Instagram because that's the only social media platform that I asked you for them on is from a good friend of mine, a theme park Groot42 and he says Grand National is better than the Smiler. For those of you who don't know I've never ridden the Smiler at Alton Towers but I have ridden Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. When I first rode Grand National at Blackpool Pleasure Beach in 2015, I 
hated the damn thing, but then another good friend of mine, Josh from Theme Park Mad, who does love a rough ride, so yeah, he loves Grand National even on wheel seats, which is what I believe I rode it on in 2015, well he convinced me to go back on it and said if you sit on a non-wheel seat, it's not rough, and yeah, I rode it on a non-wheel seat in 2019 and it wasn't rough, and I've ridden it on non-wheel seats ever since, I've loved it, and it's, yeah, it's definitely better than the overrated average wooden coaster that is Megaphobia at Oakwood, just for our, you know, drop an unpopular opinion in there. Um, and yeah, is it better than a Smiler? Now, those of you who know me, oh no, I'm not, I'm not, like, in terms of the Smiler, obviously I'm not reading it, but I'm not one of those people, you know, looking at it, it's like, oh my word, it's the Smiler, oh my word, the Smiler's amazing, oh my word, I'm part of this massive Smiler cult, oh my word, the Smiler's the best thing in the world. But at the same time, I'm not one of those people who thinks the thing's awful, it, yeah, uh, but, and I've never ridden it, uh, but, not gonna lie, uh, I'm kind of in the middle, and I don't know what side I'm leaning towards, but, um, yeah, um, it does look a bit badly profiled in some areas of the ride, uh, I, yeah, it does look a bit rough in places, which, yeah, if it's rough, I will slate it, um, I hate the theme, I hate the soundtrack, so yeah, but, you know, if it's a good coaster, I'll appreciate it. And looking at it, I think it'll be alright, like, people say it's rough in a couple of sections, it's kind of just inversions, like, let's be honest, like, yeah, um, but in terms of where I rank it, I predict it'll be number three in the big seven. Whether it'll be worse than Grand National, uh, which is currently number nine in my top ten rides, and I rate that below um, Galactica and stuff like that, which I think the Smiler will rate higher than just predicting. Uh, so I think the Smiler will be better than Grand National, but if I prefer Grand National to it, I honestly wouldn't be surprised. Because I mean, yeah, like look at it, it's just like someone went in Planet Coaster, isn't it? And threw a lot of inversions together and dropped a couple of air tunnels in there, to be honest. Like, yeah, it's totally lazy. You know, I'll drop another unpopular opinion in there as well. The Smiler is a lazy design, it's just inversions thrown together with a couple of airtime hills. Um, you know, I understand people who enjoy it for the inversions. Like, I'm more excited about the air tents, to be honest, but inversions don't necessarily make a better coaster if they don't ride well. But yeah, we'll see. Um, can't really give a proper judgement on that opinion, obviously, because I've not ridden the Smiler, but. You know, um, Ed, uh, I know, sorry for exposing your real name. I appreciate you um, and your opinion because I wouldn't be surprised if it proves true for me, but I'm more leaning towards that it won't be true and that I will prefer to smile, but uh, we'll see. Uh, anyway, on to the next opinion. Our next opinion then comes from the creator with the best name in the world because his real name is Ben, and for those of you who don't know, my real name's Ben, and his Instagram name is Theme Park Ben, which is an absolutely brilliant name, obviously. Uh, you know, second best name out there, apart from Thrillnet, you know. Uh, I know it said it was the best, but you know, second best Instagram name. And he says that Bubbleworks was the best ride ever at the trashy, awful theme park that is, yeah, I made that bit up. He didn't say about it being a trashy awful park, but I'm not a fan of Chessington, another unpopular opinion. Wow, that's free. Um, yeah, Bubbleworks was the best ride ever at Chessington. Um, in terms of dark rides, I would agree, like, who the hell are you, Chessington, for ripping that thing out, like, all the theming of that out, and replacing it with some awful IP Gruffalo thing. Like, I'm not reading the Gruffalo, but I've seen it on my IP over here, and, it's alright for a dark ride, but I mean, Bubbleworks is better. Like, the soundtrack for Bubbleworks, like, that was absolutely incredible. Like, yeah, and then, like, yeah, and then, like, all the fountains at the end, like, they still have them in there. Like, they have, like, working vo water vortexes 
and this yeah it's still there as well and they were there in the original bubble works like they're incredible like they don't get you soaked unlike the one in Valhalla which doesn't work properly although I mean Valhalla's obviously been refurbished at the moment so it might be uh, getting ripped out I hope not I just hope they can like fix it up so maybe it doesn't get you quite as wet then you know we can ride Valhalla more um, you know make Valhalla a bit more be you know better for the UK climate like, I still want to get wet on Valhalla because it's kind of the point of the ride like, it is a dark water ride but yeah how wet you got on that ride before anyway and you might still get as wet I don't know what they're doing to it but like you could only ride it on like a hot summer's day or I could anyway I know some crazy people rode it in like February but no that wasn't for me but it's Bubble Works was Bubble Works the best ride ever at Chessington and is it still like that to this day you know has anything beaten it uh, obviously I'm not ridden stuff like Tiger Rock at Chessington that's been refurbished but as of 2015 um, and what I've experienced at Chessington I've not experienced Dragon's Fury either um, by the way uh, no it's not but it's a very good ride and I wouldn't class that as an unpopular opinion to be honest because yeah like you know uh, many people love Bubbleworks, it was really popular um, and many people were really upset when that got removed like myself um, but yeah Vampire is my favourite ride at Chessington as things stand if I am to ever go back to Chessington ever again I will ride Dragon's Fury um, and stuff like that, I'm not done obviously but yeah I'm sure Bubbleworks you know, it'll always stay as a brilliant ride, I'll always remember it. Next opinion then comes yet again from Theme Park Ben, and he says The Walking Dead is way better than X. I have never ridden either, but I'm going to say straight up, I, yeah, I don't think it is based off obviously PO reasons, so can't judge him properly because I've not been there in person and experienced either of them hope to get to Fort Park next year possibly and experience The Walking Dead but no I definitely disagree however I can see why someone would prefer The Walking Dead to X that's definitely a very unpopular opinion um, but obviously The Walking Dead has a storyline and stuff like that and X didn't so if you like, like an experience ride you know I'm I do like experience rides but you know yeah, I don't care if something has a storyline or not, and to be honest, if a coaster's really good, you know, a coaster coaster, it doesn't need theming necessarily. I feel like theming is quite overrated in terms of how much it's needed, but it certainly does enhance a ride, and, you know, as, you know, it certainly does enhance something, so, but it's not mandatory, is what I'm saying, like, you can, if you have good ride hardware, it's not necessary, but... Yeah, as for X, I mean the coaster I don't believe is like amazing, it's a family coaster, but I don't know, I love that, I love the look of that theme, like, and then The Walking Dead, it just doesn't appeal as much to me, like I'm not the biggest fan of horror, Um, I don't know, X, X's theme just look, look cooler, even though like Walking Dead is arguably being like more heavily themed and obviously has more of a storyline to it, uh, but yeah, uh, I can't say too much on that, uh, but yeah, I don't agree from what I've seen, anyway. Uh, on to the next opinion. Next opinion comes yet again from Theme Park Ben. Uh, thank you for sending so many in. Uh, and this time says Colossus and Inferno are only good on front row. Uh, again, these are two roller coasters at Fort Park, so I can't say too much on them. Uh, but... Um, yeah, it's definitely unpopular. Colossus, less so because a lot of people find that really rough, a bit like Infusion. I'm not sure it's quite that bad from what I've heard, but it's not meant to be great. And apparently it's better on front row, so yeah, I, I guess that's probably true. Like, I'm going to try and get front row when I do go and do Colossus. I'm obviously going to do it, at least for the credit, even if I never ride it again because it's not bearable, but hopefully it'll be bearable. Um, I'll do it at the start of the day, I think, when I go to Fork. I'll do it first thing, then hopefully it's not had a chance to warm up and sort of get really rough, because I believe that's the best thing to do. But, yeah, I don't think you can choose your row. I hope you can choose front row, because if you can, I'll definitely 
try front row. Uh, see what I think. And then Nemesis Inferno. Um, this seems really underrated. It looks really good. Like I think that's pretty unpopular to say it's only good on front row. Like I reckon it'll be a really good coaster. I reckon it could be in my top ten UK coasters. Definitely. Will it be as good or better than the as than the original Nemesis? I mean. It has a lot to live up to, a lot of people are sort of saying it's as good if not better now, but I'm not too sure about that, but I wouldn't be surprised, like, everyone says its layout looks boring, like, feels boring or whatever, I think it looks like quite an interesting layout, I know half of it's sort of ripped from Batman the Ride and it's a bit off the shelf, but I mean it's themed up. It's obviously I've never ridden Batman the Ride, so it's not that big a deal. And then it does, you know, have a unique layout towards the end. Like it is still a custom layout, as far as I'm aware. Nemesis Inferno. And it has a pre-drop at the start as well. It looks cool. It looks like a good, good coaster to be honest. Like I'm actually really looking forward to doing Nemesis Inferno. Like I'm really looking forward to doing all the rides at Fork, to be honest. But like, yeah, there's definitely rides I'm looking forward to more than it, but, you know, I look forward to getting on it and seeing how it compares to the original Nemesis and also the uh, Chinese Fireball side of Dragon Challenge. I've done at Universal, because that's the other thing, and Invert I've done. Never did Hunkarian Hauntail, unfortunately, but, yeah, uh, I am sort of half agree, half disagree, but then again, my judgment's not really anything to go off because obviously I've not experienced those rides um, but yeah thank you for your opinion speaking of Fort Park opinions uh, our next opinion comes from Billy Bates 72 and he says Colossus is better than Saw obviously I've never ridden them both but personally I very much doubt it I know people say that Saw can be a little rough as well I believe it's it's been running better the last couple of years, but it has been known to be rough in the past. Um, and no, I'm really looking forward to Saw. Those of you who've watched, sorry for the blog again, but those of you who've watched my uh, top five most anticipated coasts in the UK that I'm not yet ridden, click the card in the top right to go and see that. You'll know that Saw is actually my number two most anticipated coaster in the UK. Like, I personally think he'll be better than the Smiler, to be honest. Just dropping another unpopular opinion in there. But, yeah, looks like really good. Like, a really good overall experience. It's obviously a ghost like Eurofighter, and if speed's anything to go off, I'll love the thing, uh, because I love speed. And, yeah, it's just, I think I'll rate it higher solely because of, the, obviously, the experience. Uh, it's got an extra inversion in there as well, which is another bonus, but I mean, like, I don't see how it, Colossus could be better than it, even though it's got the 10 inversions, like, like, if it runs really smooth for me, but then maybe, just maybe, Colossus will be better, but, yeah, um, same with the Smiler, like, if I get a ridiculously smooth ride on that, maybe I'd rate that higher than Saw, but, yeah, um, I think that Saw will be the best of the three of those rides. Um, like, the theme is incredible. It's one of the best theme coasters in the UK, definitely. You can tell by looking at it. Um, but yeah, we'll see about that one again. Uh, it's hard to judge that. Um, but yeah. Our next opinion then comes from my good friend Josh from Theme Park Mad. We were talking about Grand National before, we're going to be talking about Grand National again because he says Grand National is smooth, definitely very unpopular there, but he's very passionate about Grand National, uh, is Josh, he definitely thinks it's really underrated, um, like myself, um, I think it's very underrated as well, um, and yeah, I mean is it smooth? Not in 2015 on the ride I had on it was not smooth. I'm not really, well I did actually ride it on a wheel seat on the front row, but there was front row so it's hard to, you can't really judge that. Uh, but on non-wheel seats it's smooth. Um, on the front row ride I had on it, it was smooth. Um, but is it really a smooth ride? I'm not too sure, but I rate it high for the rides I've had on it now. Um, 
because I'm not one to like put a coaster down just because it might ride badly like some rides on it like if I get like good rides on a coaster and then maybe some bad rides as well I'll favour the good rides and you know rank it based on them like and not want to go well it doesn't give good rides all the time so yeah I'm going to put it down for it like I'm not a person to do that I believe you should appreciate coasters for everything they can possibly give I know I've said about Infusion before and I still obviously rate that really low but, uh, low. Uh, but I've not had a smooth ride on that that I can judge off so it wouldn't be fair for me to go oh it rates this high because some people say it's smooth but yeah the like I only judge coasters based on what I've experienced guys, as you can tell. Uh, I know I say about the Smiler and what, how I predict that to rank and stuff, but those are just predictions, I don't like official, officially include it in my rankings, but yeah, I um, guess I'm pretty neutral on that one. Grand National can be smooth, but it can be also rough. So. Yeah, next opinion then comes from Coaster Casper and he says Big One is better than Wicker Man. Now this is interesting because I have to um, confess that I used to think this. Um, yeah, uh, I think it was due to the fact that obviously I'd not ridden the Big One many times uh, back then actually. And I was, you know, the sort of the height of it and stuff was still a big deal, where it's less of a big deal now, so I rate it a bit lower. Uh, but it's strange, because in 2018, when I first rode it, I found it a little rough, so I sort of didn't rate it that highly, but then in 2019, I had some better rides on it, so it really went up in my rankings, to the point where it overtook Wicker Man, but then I've obviously ridden Wicker Man since... Uh, then uh, when it got to that in my rankings and Wicker Man uh, overtook Big One again so I do disagree but I mean for someone who's not ridden Big One many times I could understand why they'd think that but I've ridden it quite a few times now so I don't agree but yeah I totally I do get that uh, with Wicker Man only being a family coaster Big One is more thrilling in it uh, but Wick Wicker Man ironically gives more airtime because Big one doesn't really give any, but uh, those of you who watched my big one review, I know shameless plug again, I'll put that in the top right as well. Oh my word. Um, I couldn't figure out what hand to put up then. Oh dear. Uh, but yeah, um, I appreciate the ride for the views, I appreciate it for the first drop. You know, it's fast, it's fun, it's. yeah. Um, fairly well paced when it runs at its best although it to be fair the mid course does slow it down a lot but before that it's quite well paced the airtime hills just need to be a bit lower that would if you change that then you'd have a really good coaster because you get airtime but yeah uh, thank you for your opinion our next opinion then is another one from Josh from Theme Park Mad and he says Passage del Terra is amazing Passage del Terra obviously being the scare attraction outside Blackpool Pleasure Beach that he wants to drag me in. And I don't know why you're sending that as, in as an unpopular opinion, Josh, because I don't really, I don't really consider that unpopular. Like, I mean, a lot of people who, you know, are into the scare attraction say that Passage del Terra is really good. Like, and watching POVs of it, it does look really good as much as I'm terrified to go in it. I'll probably get dragged in it like when I can go back to parks again and it would be safe for me to do something like that in the confined space. It'll yeah, it'll probably be a while before I'll get in it. I was meant to be getting dragged in it this year, but obviously COVID happened and yeah, that's not happened as a result. So uh, but yeah, uh, I won't consider that unpopular. Uh, but yeah, it does look, it, it looks really good, so yeah, um, that's all I can really say. I'm not been in it, so it can't, I can't really judge it fully, but it does look like a brilliant scare attraction. It looks better than, you know, a lot of Halloween attractions I've seen POVs of, to be honest. So yeah, I look forward to it. It's really well themed. I, did I just say I look forward to it? 
Wow. Um, uh, uh, I suppose sort of. I do confess, but I'm terrified at the same time. Um, but yeah, um, that's all I can really say about Passage Del Terror. Our next opinion then is the final one uh, that Josh from Fiendbot Mad has sent in. And it's another one about a wooden coaster not being rough because Josh either loves rough rides and doesn't consider them rough or... Oh, I need to stop making that joke, don't I? That's family channel. Whoopsie-daisy. Um, yeah, um, he, I guess he does just doesn't find rough coast. Wait, did I just say Wicker Man's rough? Oh, um... I guess it just doesn't find wooden coasters rough. Um, but yeah, uh, if you couldn't already guess, his opinion is Wicker Man isn't rough. For those of you who don't know, Wicker Man seems to have randomly, for some stupid reason, started getting hate from people saying it's rough uh, as of this year. I've obviously not ridden it this year, so I can't judge this one fully, but it really was not rough when I rode in 2019 and in 2018. Like, it's a GCI, it's going to have a bit of a rattle to it because it's a wooden coaster all rattle all wooden coasters gonna have a bit of a rattle to them and I mean yeah I rode Woden another GCI at Europa Park in 2019 and that wasn't rough either it just had the classic GCI rattle that Wicker Man has or had as of 2019 like if that ride is actually rough then Alton Towers have clearly done a terrible job looking after it because it's a two year old running coaster like it shouldn't be running like Grand National like or Big Dipper or something like yeah like I'll honestly be so mad at Towers if I go next year and that thing's rough because like it's just pathetic if it is like it's gonna have a rattle to it like Wickerman's always had that because it's a GCI but like it shouldn't be to the point where it's like unbearable or roughness like harms the ride and if it does i'll be having something to say to towers next year when i hopefully get back on it but yeah um it isn't rough as of 2019 when i wrote it so shut up about shut up hating on it and just deal with it because it's probably not rough okay everyone my next opinion then is another opinion from Billy Bates 72 and this is another one that I can't even judge because I've never done a scare maze in either the UK or America but he says um, America's mazes are more intense than uh, the UK's mazes. Um, that is probably an unpopular opinion because from what I'm aware in America they have much stricter rules in terms of touching people in mazes and stuff like that which they can do here in the UK. Um, we have some very extreme attractions here in the UK that are quite physical, uh, which I'm not sure they do have in America or not. It, it may be a state by state thing, but I know in particular, like the Florida mazes at like Universal in particular, I don't believe the actors are allowed to touch you in any of them. So they probably are most likely less intense as a result because obviously the scares have to be from a distance um, so yeah that, I can see why that's an unpopular opinion I'm not the most knowledgeable on this sort of stuff but I'm guessing that's why it's an unpopular opinion and I mean obviously I've never done a scare me so it's hard to tell but personally I would find someone I'd find being touched in a maze much scarier than having scares from a distance especially being visually impaired and the place being dark that is one of Thing I kind of have for my advantage when I go in mazes, like I'll struggle to see some of it, which well, should help in a way. But you know, if it's physical, you know, I feel I can obviously feel a lot and get the scares that way. So, for that reason, I don't reckon that the American mazes, or at least you know, in comparison to the UK ones where they can touch you, I don't reckon they'll be as scary. I mean, maybe. Some of the ones where they can't touch you are scarier than some of the UK ones where they can't touch you in like in general because obviously I guess maybe they're much more practiced with some, like non-physical mazes than uh, we are. Although we do have a lot of non-physical mazes, you know, Passage del Terror is a non-physical maze here in the UK. You know, there's loads this year like 
uh, the attic, um, freak show, toxic junkyard, you know, Altonville, all stuff like that. Towers this year was all non-physical because of COVID. Um, the foot part, like everything, was non-physical pretty much this year, as far as I'm aware, because of COVID and social distancing measures. So uh, yeah, uh, but I have to say that I probably disagree on that one but obviously I've not done any scare mazes so yeah. Our next opinion then is from Coaster Commonwealth who says Dollywood is better than see the point. Now that's a very unpopular opinion and I'm gonna drop another unpopular opinion in there in relation to that. I'm honestly not that hyped to go to Dollywood to be honest be and yeah I know a lot of people are really hyped for it but I don't know sounds stupid but as much as the Six Flags parks are often regarded as being bad parks they look like they have some brilliant coasters and I'm more excited for Six Flags parks than Dollywood to be honest. Most parks I've seen in America to be honest are more excited for than Dollywood including Cedar Point so I'll drop that in there I completely disagree with that opinion. Obviously I've never been to any though and I believe this person has so they'll have a better idea of the parks and how they feel but just looking at them um, Dollywood seems much less appealing like I'd much rather go to the other sort of theme park I've seen in America they have more sort of amusement parks that aren't themed over there but the other sort of themed park over there which is uh, Silver Dollar City I'm definitely much more hyped for that than uh, Dollywood as well uh, I don't know, I'm not a massive fan of Dolly Parton, well I'm not like, not a fan but I'm not a fan so that contributes to my opinion of that, uh, but yeah, um, I doubt Dollywood would be better than Cedar Point for me, um, but thanks for your opinion. Our next opinion then comes from Coaster Merch But Metal and he says the ultimate is the best coaster in the UK. No, I definitely don't agree with that, and I'm sure many people don't, uh, but many people rate the ultimate higher than me, I feel. The problem with it is it's okay, but it doesn't really have much airtime in there, and the coaster itself is just brutally rough. Like, uh, I prefer it to Infusion and, you know, a few other coasters, but it's not one of my favourites because of how rough it is, but it's one I'd give another go, give another chance, because um, I wouldn't put it... It was close to unbearable for me, but I wouldn't call it completely unbearable. Like it's one I've given them a go, but the laterals, the laterals, like insane. Like it must be the highest lateral rules on any coaster operated on the UK. Like I don't know how it's even legal to have laterals that high. Um, but yeah, even if it wasn't that rough. And it definitely would be my favourite coaster in the UK, but it's a very unique coaster that we're, I'm very grateful we have in the UK because you know it goes all the way through the forest, like you go so far away from the park. You know, it could rank quite highly if it's not as rough, but I wouldn't, you know, I understand why you think it's the best coaster in the UK and it's very unique, but uh, it's definitely not that for me. Uh, but you know, it's so long, it's so unique, it's, it's brilliant. Um, wait, oh, why do I keep getting things mixed up in this video? I wouldn't call it brilliant, but yeah, um, it's unique. That's the best way to describe it. Next opinion then comes from Theme Park Doe, and he's actually given a bit of a two-in-one here. Um, yeah, uh, and he said, uh, the smiler isn't actually that good. And Flamingo Land is underrated. So we talked about the Smiler before, or I did, should I say? And I said that I'm kind of in the middle. I don't know whether it'll be that good or not. I've actually never ridden it. I predicted it'd be number three in the Big Seven. I predicted I'm not going to be one of these Smiler cult people, but I'm not going to be one of those people who thinks it's horrible. Uh, but saying that. I think Colossus looks smoother than the Smiler. I'll drop another unpopular opinion in there. And I sort of, you know, talked quite down to Colossus. So, I don't know, really. Maybe I will think it's awful. Who knows? Uh, we'll have to wait until next year or, or hopefully next year. I, anyway, whenever I can uh, get back on it again, uh, get back to Alton Towers. As for Flamingo Land, 
I totally agree. It is a really underrated park. It's my third favourite park in the UK after Blackpool, Pleasure Beach and Alton Towers. Uh, Blackpool being my favourite and then Alton Towers second. Uh, third favourite I've been to. It's got some brilliant coasters, you know? Nothing... No, I'd say top UK coasters, but, you know, Kamali and Velocity are solid coasters. Mumbo Jumbo is okay, not quite as good, but it's still a good coaster. Hero, not as good. That's not particularly a great coaster, although I don't think it's as... I feel like that's quite overhated. It's not quite as bad as people say, but it's very uncomfortable. And then you got some good family slash junior coasters as well. So yeah, Flamingo Land's a solid park that everyone should visit. Um, it's got a good zoo as well, uh, for those of you who like animals. So yeah, it's a really good day out. And if you've never been before, I'd say it's a two-day park, to be honest, if you include the zoo in it. It's, re it's really good, Flamingo Land. Um, but yeah, uh, that's all I can really say about that one. And our final opinion then comes from Keelan Bourne and he says Icon is massively overrated for what is a slow, forceless, boring, poorly themed coaster. No, it's not slow, it's not boring, it's not forceless, it is poorly themed but I'll get on that to a minute and it's not overrated. It's my number one coaster. So yeah, it's clearly very good. So let's start then with it's slow. It is the second fastest roller coaster at Blackpool Pleasure Beach at 52.8 miles per hour behind the big one, which is 74 miles per hour. So it's clearly not slow, is it, Keelan? Now for it being forceless, it pulls 4.3 G uh, maximum, and that's 4. 0.3 times the force of gravity so it's clearly not forceless is it because it's pulling a ton of force and it also has loads of ejector on the top hat it's got loads of ejector on the Immelman that's not an Immelman, junior Immelman thingy in, not an inversion uh, that you, when you come out of it when you're on the back row and like it packs so much positives that like when you go into the top hat when you're on the front and you get some nice floater on that top hat as well and it pulls loads of force on the helixes in the second half if you sat on the front. So there you go. It's not forceless. As for it being boring, it's not boring at all. It has so many twists. It twists all on the rides. You get airtime on it. You've got inversions. Like, what else do you want on a coaster, for goodness sake? Like, who even are you saying that it's overrated and all the things you said? And as for it being poorly themed, Blackpool is an amusement park, not a theme park. There's no theme in there because it's an amusement park. It doesn't need to be themed because it's not called a theme park. It's there to amuse you, not immerse you as such in themed experiences. So, yeah, it's not overrated because all the points I've said, or all the points you've made, I've just, yeah, I've said what I need to say about it. And it's just all rubbish. So, Make sure you subscribe, click the bell, and leave a like and all that. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. Five minutes later. <sighs> Some people, man.